welcome back to the Bronx Journal. I'm Amy Ceballo. There are many nonprofit organizations in New York City that fight the many injustices we face every day. They constantly try to help our communities move forward. One organization in particular is the Urban Rebuilding Initiative. They raise social economic awareness as well as create employment and develop community empowerment programs for underserved communities. Here to talk to us about this organization and what we can do to help is Harry Barrisford. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Pardon my attire. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, what is the organization about and what do you do with the organization? Um, well, basically what we're about is uh, we're a small community group uh, made up of uh, different people from within the community who care about uh, pitching in and helping out disenfranchised black and brown communities, you know, specifically low-income uh, communities that don't get a lot of representation when it comes to uh, in the political arena, when they uh, get under service for public services like, you know, simple education. And, uh, you know, what we work on is, is, is developing programs that help make an impact in giving people opportunities to, you know, get some form of education, um, create a job for themselves, develop uh, entrepreneurship skills, develop organizing and fundraising skills. What made you want to start this initiative? Uh, well, what made me want to start this initiative is, is that, um, you know, I'm a African American uh, living in New York City and I know firsthand what it feels like to be disenfranchised here in New York City. And uh, my motivation is, is that, uh, you know, if I can be disenfranchised here, you know, how many others are going through the same thing? And how can I myself, you know, contribute to, you know, ending that disenfranchisement, you know, working to empower not only myself, but, you know, the individuals in the community I care about, you know, so I guess that's my motivation. What began the organization? When did it start? Um, well, we started la uh, February of last year. Uh, I founded the organization. We started working around the tenants issue because last year uh, the rent regulations were expiring for New York City. Um, so we started off by doing uh, a big uh, letter writing campaign and uh, petition uh, drive in the Bronx here, uh, organizing a couple different rallies up in Albany basically to tell governor, the governor that we wanted the rent regulation the rent regulations renewed and strengthened. What was the response to the petition? And uh, well, we, we've been getting a really, really good response, actually. Right now, we got 120 members. Uh, majority of them are up, uh, are down, up and down the East Coast here. Uh, we got a couple members out in uh, California and Texas. Um, and we've, we've been doing a lot of, lot of good work. We've been receiving a really, really positive reception. A lot of people have, not only have they been, you know, helping us out just by, like, supporting and participating in our campaigns, but people have been, you know, taking their own time out of their schedule to come out and volunteer with us. Who's mostly impacted by this initiative? Uh, well, right now, uh, most of our, our, our organizing work is being done here in the Bronx or w well within the five boroughs really um, but specifically in the Bronx and I think that the people who are most impacted by the work that we do are the uh, low to moderate income folks in the community people who are living uh, with issues such as you know homelessness uh, lack of employment uh, searching for opportunities to you know express themselves and, and be able to contribute to society what are the most common problems that our community is facing today? Uh, well, in my opinion, I think the most common problems that we're facing today is the lack of education opportunities, uh, the lack of, of, of housing that is available to those who can't afford it, um, and the lack of unity between ourselves. And I, I don't mean just, just between uh, the brother man and his fellow man in the community, but between the community organizations and nonprofits that and private charities that already exist in the community, a lot of these people are they're basically allowing people to accept their situation instead of actually being more revolutionary or more empowering to the people that they serve. They're not really teaching these people how to, you know, uh, develop their own resources and, and empower themselves. They're just giving them one meal or one blanket at night and then keeping them strung on so that they have to come back to these people again. And I, and I think that's what, where we're trying to differentiate ourselves from most of the nonprofits and community organizations that already exist. So what exactly are you teaching them, like the people that you're training? 
Uh, well, right now we are doing an arts, uh, well, an organic arts workshop where we teach uh, youth. Uh, we're specifically talking to kids from from eight to sixteen, um, basically just showing them how to use their creative talents to, you know, help empower themselves by doing things like uh, knitting, uh, painting. Uh, a spoken word. We also teaching people about uh, organic farming, um, how to farm here in urban areas using different green technologies like aquaponics or hydroponic systems. Um, we actually got a pilot program that we're doing right now up in Norwood uh, on Rochambeau Avenue where we actually have uh, different aquaponic systems set up where we're growing fruits and vegetables locally right there in the community and showing different people in, 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 the, res in the community where we live how to actually use these sets and the value of organic food and being able to produce it yourself. In other words, you're pretty much saying that you're trying to create activists in your own community. Is that right? Yes, but not so much activists, more like uh, organizers. You know, because we have we have tons of community organizations, uh, lobbyists, and political organizations that are doing a lot of advocating or activism work, as they say it. But you know, one of the things that we don't see in the community is a lot of community organizing, specifically here in the Bronx. You know, a lot of our people are are disheartened by the system. They feel complicit. You know, they're basically just going along with the system, and it's not many people who are going out there saying, "Look." These are simple programs that we can implement now, and you don't need a Fortune 500 company. You don't need a political official or anybody else to help implement it. These are things that you can do yourself and, and just start right there on your local block. How can people make a difference in their own neighborhoods? Um, well, I think how can people make a difference? Uh, talking to each other. You know, I think just as far as saying hello to the person you meet in the elevator and starting to talk about uh, just local issues that's going on in your building, start, you know, connecting and networking with people, uh, that, that'll that make a difference. You know, it'll open up the, the it'll open up the environment to, to be able to start having a dialogue with people. We don't, one of the things we don't do in New York City, we don't talk to each other. You know, we walk around with our heads down in our own space. You see people on the subway, they won't even talk to you. you your grandmother can drop, can, can fall down and maybe one person will rush to go help them. We don't talk to each other enough. And I think one of the ways that we can start actively making change here in the community is talking to one each other and staying active on community events. Stop watching the Maury show, stop watching BET or these music videos. Turn on the news channel, you know, to, uh, read a book. Take, take an hour out of your day to, to unplug from Facebook. You know, sit down, read a book, try to look, help somebody, tell, tell the truth at least once a day it, to, 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 to at least 10 people out of the day. Just tell the truth because we lie to ourselves a lot and we lie to the whole world, you know. Do you have any values like set up for the near future? Um, yes, um, June 2nd, uh, in conjunction with the Freedom Party, uh, South Bronx Community Congress, and uh, Friends from Brook Park, um, we're actually going to be participating in the Know Your Rights Festival, where there'll be at least uh, about uh, seven to ten different organizations down there uh, giving out information to uh, residents in the community about their rights as a tenant, their rights when they're being stopped by the police or going through the legal system. Um, and it's going to be held at Brook Ave Park, which is uh, down in the South Bronx. I understand that you're starting a new project. Can you tell us what it is? Uh, yeah, we're actually starting, um, it's called our, our Organic uh, Food and Farming uh, Project. Um, and what we're doing is, is that we're going around the Bronx and around the five boroughs looking for unused land. We don't care if it's on an apartment complex, on somebody's roof. And what we're doing is, is we're trying to occupy these spaces and take over them so that we can start producing food for low-income communities. Um, we want to use green technology, like I was saying before, with the aquaponic systems and the hydroponic systems to actually grow uh, fruits and vegetables um, in a sustainable way without you, with, with, with conserving water, with conserving serving energy and um, to actually grow food in the community and start a, a small, a local market where these markets will sell food and grow the food locally on site so we won't have to travel or anything to get food. What made you want to start that program? Um, I am a um, urban planning and a civil engineer major and um, I believe that sustainable building and uh, sustainable living is the key to social justice.
Okay. How can people show support for the project? Um, well, you can actually go on our website, which is uh, uripeoplesinitiative.org. Um, our campaigns and initiative page, uh, we have actually a spot on there where you can uh, contact us. Um, we're asking people to help out either by donating some uh, you know, money so that we can buy more supplies. They also can donate grow space, so if they have a space in their building or they have a lot that they would like to see some fruits and vegetables or flowers growing into it, they, we can partnership in that way. And we're also looking for more volunteers. We need people to come pitch in, um, help us do scouting for new locations, uh, help us actually build the aquaponic sets and facilitate workshops. Do you guys have any internships available? That can uh, yes, we do. Um, we always have internships available uh, specifically for people who are interested in not only helping out with our food program, but who are interested in helping out with like community organizing, uh, doing uh, running or facilitating political campaigns, because we also work with different candidates here in the city. Um, and they can help us um, you know, with administration work. I mean, you just have to contact us. We give it all the time. Um, who can join? Who can be part of this internship? Anybody can be, anybody can join. Uh, you're a college student, anybody. You can come from anywhere. As long as you're a college student, come down, come talk with us. But you got to be committed. Uh, we're not looking for somebody who's just there trying to get credit. We're looking for serious people who are going to be willing to commit their time to really getting involved in projects. That means going outside, walking around, being on your feet for eight hours, talking to people you may not like. You know what I mean? You have to be committed and you really got to be about doing something empowering for the community. If you're not, we're going to smell it on you when, we, when you come in the door and we're going to turn you around. So. Um, um, can you give us your contact information again? Um, well, people can contact and read more information about our organization at uh, uripeoplesinitiative.org. Um, you can also uh, shoot me a direct line at hbmcnearry uh, at gmail.com. Um, but if you want to get more information, the best place I would say to start by contacting us through the website. And um, Facebook, I believe you Oh, yes, we do have a Facebook page. Um, it's Urban Rebuilding Initiative, uh, research, uh, research, Development, and Advocacy. They can find us on Facebook. I don't have the, the link. Or I don't know, remember that stuff. Thank you so much for 